Alrighty, so welcome everyone uh, to uh, this uh, session to discuss the course essentials of the Bachelor of Health Sciences. Uh, my name is Haidar al Ubaidi and I am coordinating this course. Uh, I work as a senior lecturer at the departments of Physiology, Anatomy, and Microbiology, referred to as PAM. Um, and um, I am uh, teaching in various anatomy subjects, currently coordinating the head um, and neck anatomy and neuroanatomy. This is a third year anatomy subject. And also I am doing research in the field of diabetes prevention and management. For more details about my um, work at Latrobe, you can search for my name uh, through Latrobe website. This is the link for my professional uh, website. Uh, before we start the session today, we would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri uh, people as the traditional custodians of the land upon which the Bandura campus is located. We recognize their ongoing connection uh, to the land and value the unique contribution that all indigenous Australians make um, to the university and the wider Australian society. All right, uh, so the purpose of this session is to provide you with an information about the specific um, uh, details of the course, the majors um, uh, of uh, uh, th this course, uh, what strategy, strategies that uh, you can uh, implement to help uh, you succeed in your study. And also in the last uh, uh, um, slides, it will give you a short um, uh, Q&A um, uh, um, uh, period. So we'll open the um, uh, chance, uh, uh, time for you to ask questions and we'll be available to answer your uh, questions. Hopefully we'll uh, be able to answer all your questions during these sessions. Um, this session is currently being recorded um, um, as per um, uh, Rita's request. Uh, so uh, I'm assuming that Rita is going to make it available for the students who uh, didn't manage to attend this um, uh, session. So we understand that um, a majority or some of the students who attend or start the university study have a mix, maybe have a mixed feeling of being excited to do a university degree and at the same time may be confused, a bit stressed about what, because they are not sure of what expectations um, um, uh, are required at the university level. So at Latrobe University, we understand this and we are here to help you succeed. These are some of the uh, important um, um, uh, predictors of success. Time on task, or uh, this is considered to be the strongest predictor of success. So we strongly advise you to schedule sufficient number of hours or sufficient time for each subject and for each task on weekly basis. Um, and this, you can adjust the um, amounts of the time required for each subject on, um, from week to week based on what assignment or assessment you've got in that specific week. Attendance to the classes is also uh, critical for um, your success. And this is because we found from previous studies, whether here done at Latrobe Uni or at other universities, is that the students who attend the classes, whether face-to-face -face or currently uh, uh, the via Zoom uh, online attendance, um, students who attend the classes usually perform well better than students who do not attend. So please um, make sure to attend your classes in different modes uh, uh, if you can. And uh, the online engagement uh, is um, um, strongly linked to the uh, attendance of the classes. Um, this is because attending with the engagement, engagement with your demonstrators, with your um, peers will provide you an opportunity to interact with um, uh, them, uh, ask questions um, or hear an answer to some of your questions um, and uh, develop a logistics to understand complex scenarios. And this comes really critical when you try to answer questions which 
is not direct question. It may uh, um, require information from more, more than one topic. So this is uh, really a good um, way to develop your um, uh, rationale and understandings of the scenarios. Work life study. Uh, we understand that many students need to do some work while finishing or doing their um, uh, university degree. Um, however, we do recommend that you don't work more than 10 to 15 hours per week if um, you are doing a full-time study. Um, and besides, you need to to dedicate sometimes for social um, uh, relationship to maintain your social relationship, not phys um, keep physical distance, but not social uh, distancing. Distancing always uh, try to um, maintain some sort of balance between your work, study, as well as family commitment, and all, all, always focus on your goals. Remind yourself um, about why you are studying. Um, the Bachelor of Health Sciences, what you wanted to achieve by the end of this year and by the end of this degree. Are you thinking to do a postgraduate study or are you thinking to secure a career for at the end of this uh, course? You may not be able to answer all these questions at this time, but it is always good to set up some um, uh, goals, whether short-term or long-term goals, to help you go through um, uh, your study. All right, so the Bachelor of Health Sciences is a college-owned subject, this, uh, or course. This is um, owned by the College of Science, Health, and Engineering, referred to as SHE. And it's delivered by three schools from this college. The School of Life Sciences, School of Psychology and Public Health, Lateral Rural Health School, okay? You can see that there are another four schools um, belongs to this college, but for the Bachelor of Health Sciences actually de delivered by the first three schools. The first two schools are currently are available here in Bendura campus, and Lateral Rural Health School is uh, in Bendigo, and uh, because we've got Bendigo students also doing the Bachelor of Health Sciences. All right, so the students who uh, do Bachelor of Health Sciences have different options depending on their preference. So um, some students after finishing the first year may choose to exit with a diploma of health. However, the majority of our students will continue in one of the six uh, majors, as you can see here, public health, health promotion major, Health and Sustainability, this is a Bendigo um, a course. Rehabilitation Counseling major, Sport Counseling and Athlete Welfare major, and this um, name will be updated shortly. I'll leave it to Paul and Scott to explore further. And uh, the, the Health and Medical Science major, this is a Bendura um, 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 offered um, major. So um, students, you can see that students uh, will be able to choose either a single major to do a single major here or a um, double major uh, from year two onward. If you haven't decided on which major you, can, you need to do, uh, you still have some time to think about before uh, the start of uh, year two. And you can see here there are, this slide actually is um, a, a summary of a um, lot of information, uh, which I prefer to be covered by the relevant um, uh, course advisor. So just, but just to show you that there are m multiple uh, opportunities for you after finishing uh, uh, this degree, whether to do a postgraduate study or to look for secure and a career option in a relevant field, depending on which major you decide to do. So this will be explored further in, in the following slides. Okay, so um, if you need for mo more information about Bachelor of Health Sciences, you can just um, go into the Latrobe uh, University Handbook. Um, you can Google it, um, Latrobe University uh, Handbook 2020, and it will give you a direct you into this main webpage here, and then you can search for Bachelor of Health Sciences. It will 
uh, give you the information about this course, um, uh, show you the majors, um, whether it, uh, if you decide to do a single major, your study plan, if you decide to do double majors, uh, and which double major combination is available for us. And also some students may decide to do a major and one of two minors available as well. So all the information about the uh, relevant subjects, uh, study plans for each major and minor available in this um, link for you. Uh, by the way, again, um, um, if, if you um, wanted to access it, just Google Latrobe University Handbook and from there uh, type Bachelor of Health Sciences to get you to this link. All right, so the, um, all the students will need to do a common core first year subject. So we've got six uh, common first year subjects offered in uh, year one in addition to two electives. Um, so there is um, subjects, um, uh, there is um, like, um, a first year coordinator, uh, Dr. Amy Larson, who's the person responsible for coordination of the core first year. She's an apology uh, for this meeting. Um, I'm hoping that um, Carolyn has managed to join us. Um, Carolyn, I can't see all, yeah, I can't see Carolyn um, profile available. Carolyn, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Beautiful. So, so Carolyn, everyone, Carolyn, Dr. Carolyn uh, Taylor, uh, she is um, uh, one of uh, our course advisors. She's, uh, she's, uh, court, um, she's responsible for health and medical uh, science major, and she kindly agreed to talk about the uh, core first year as well as for um, her um, major. So Karen, I'll leave it for you and I'll scroll when um, you want. Okay, thank you. Hi everybody, welcome to La Trobe. As Hayda said, my name is Caroline. I have had experience coordinating a couple or one of the core first year subjects, which is why I'm able to do this. So we're going to talk about the core first year first and then we'll move on to the major. So everybody within health sciences, no matter what major they decide to go into, completes the same set of core first year subjects. So you will be you're a relatively small cohort, so you will all do the same thing. The advantage of this is that it potentially allows course transfer at the end of first year, but it also means that you get to meet people from a broad range of disciplines. So across the core first year, you get introduced to some of the subjects. So the intention is that you will experience some of the content that's relevant for the anatomy and physiology major, as well as some public health and determinants of health and research um, subjects which will help you if you progress into the other majors as well. Ada, can you flick slides for me, please? So this is a very simple summary of what exactly happens in the core first year. So it was basically broken down into two sets, semester one and then semester two. So these are the three core subjects that you'll study in each of the semesters. I know you guys are on a slightly accelerated program, so semesters will be a bit different for you. So first off, you'll start with an introduction to human physiology. So we'll basically introduce you to all of the major physiological systems. So you'll cover things like the nervous system, some basic biology, as well as moving on to things more complicated systems like the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. If you haven't studied biology before, or you haven't studied it for a while, don't panic. We ease you in slowly. The first few weeks are all about setting the scene and making sure that you're ready to progress as we move through the semester. The second subject that you'll do is Introduction to Professional Practice, or IPP. And really it's all about understanding some of the concepts that you will require if you move into a professional practice. The last subject that you have to do first off is IDH or individual determinants of health. So this is all about how an individual determines how healthy they will be as well as things that are interacting with them. For each semester in the first year you have the choice of an elective. So there are really no pre-required electives that you need to take so think about something that's interesting to you and approach it that way. 
In second semester, we move on and we look at anatomy. So anatomy is all about the structure of the human body. So you start to understand how we're put together. We do some um, study of the skeleton, what we refer to as bony landmarks. So all the knobbly bits that you see in skeletons, as well as some skeletal muscle physiology and nerve anatomy, nerve system anatomy. The next subject is RAE. The name's kind of self-explanatory, but it's really all about the use of research-based evidence, so data that's been generated and how we can use that in healthcare practice. The final subject is SDH, or Social Determinants of Health, which complements IDH. So they fit quite nicely together. So all of those, everyone will have to do all of those six subjects, and you are required to pass those subjects before you're able to graduate. Some of the majors have, or all of the majors I believe have um, required prerequisite subjects. So to come into the anatomy and physiology, it's not health and medical sciences major, you need to have passed HBA and HBB before you can move into secondary. All right, Hayden, can we go to the next one? So the other thing that you need to make sure that you've completed, which you should probably already see on your LMS is these two compulsory units. They don't have any credit associated with them, but it's really important that you do them. The first one is the academic integrity module. So this really goes into what we consider to be cheating, how you would reference, how, what, where it's appropriate to take information from for assessments. Then the second one's the woman Jekka, which is all about um, Aboriginal history and that kind of thing. You, you only need to do them once as part of your degree and then they're done. They sit on your transcript as a, a line that says you've completed them. If you don't complete them this semester, they basically keep reappearing on your student online until you've done them. So get them done, they don't take very long. If you spent half a day, you'd be able to get them both done. So at least get them ticked off. The academic integrity is really important and it is something that you need to pay particular attention to moving through your degree. So it is something that you will hear a lot about and it's a really good idea to go into your subjects understanding what we're talking about when we talk about academic integrity. All right, Hayda, can we go on, please? So this right. is the health and medical science major. So this is for Carolyn um, talk. Yeah, presenting Carolyn. Sorry, I didn't manage to present her in advance. So this is her profile. And it's all yours, Carolyn. Thanks, Ada. So I am one of the course advisors. So each of the majors has their own course advisor or set of course advisors. What that basically means is that I look after or I'm responsible for helping students who are enrolled in the health and medical science major. This can be things like if you have issues accessing support, if you have questions about what electives you want to take, if you have questions about what kind of things that doing the major will allow you to do when you graduate. I assume most of you have already picked your major when you enrolled. You don't necessarily have to stick with the major that you have picked, you are able to change. So if you find after studying all of your first year subjects that anatomy and physiology really isn't for you and you want to go into a public health aspect, that's perfectly fine. So don't think that you're locked in to the major that you have chosen because you're definitely not. With the health and medical sciences major, we're all about how the human body works. So we cover a lot of anatomy, we cover physiology, and then in third year we move on and we start looking at how when we have particular diseases, the physiology and sometimes the anatomy can change. And we will also look at pharmacology which is how drugs interact with these systems and how drugs work. I appreciate that the point on this slide is possibly a little bit scary. And one of the things that we would like you to be able to do is understand what it means to be a scientist, but that doesn't mean that we expect everybody to come out of completing this major as a scientist. That's very much not the case. But what we're really saying is that we're going to teach you some of the skills that will help you if you choose to become a scientist, but equally they're very applicable if you decide to go into something completely different. So part of it's all about being able to know where to go and find information. How do you identify what's a trustworthy source? How do you go about searching for things? How do you work in a team that plays on different people's strengths? How do you plan experiments? How do you 
solve problems, how do you interpret data? So you can imagine that they're quite generic skills that can be applied to a particular field, but they're also very important no matter what you do. I'm sure Peter will agree with me in that as well. So all of the academic staff that are involved in the health and medical sciences major have, ha have or have had an active research career. So as well as being your teachers, we also have another life where we spend doing our own academic research. So we are quite well placed to, to be able to help you with all of the how to be a scientist aspect of things. Hayley, can we go on to the next slide, please? So this is a very simple summary of what you will do in the major. So HBA and HBB in first year give you a really nice foundational understanding of both the anatomy and the physiology. And we really build on those when we move into second year. So in terms of the physiology, you will study a physiology subject in each of the semesters and you will cover primarily the same systems that you've covered in first year, but you'll cover them in a lot more detail. So we'll start to really delve into the physiological mechanisms that are going on. You'll also study two anatomy subjects, one in each semester, and you basically cover most of the structures that make up the human body at some point within the major. So we will cover trunk and upper limb in one semester and start to introduce some neuroanatomy in second semester. Now you need to remember that the major set up very nicely in second and third year so that you have two core subjects for the major in each semester. You can choose to take two electives in each semester if you want to, or you can consider looking at combining your major with a second major or with a second minor. That's entirely up to you. Alternatively, you can actually pick subjects from the other majors without being in that major. So just by being in one major doesn't prevent you enrolling in some of the other subjects if they sound interesting. You just need to make sure that you meet the prereqs. So as I said earlier on, second year is more about understanding things and third year we start to look about more about how things change. So pathology is all about when it goes wrong. So if you had a particular disease state, how does that manifest? What happens to your physiology and why does that manifest as the symptoms that you will get. Pharmacology is all about understanding how drugs work, so how they will um, interact with the physiological systems, both at a cellular level as well as the systems level. So, you know, everybody at some stage in their life is likely to have to take some drugs to treat a particular condition, and we really start to look at how they work at a cellular level. You will also take an advanced anatomy subject in third year, which HADA currently coordinates, and again, you have the choice of completing two electives in each semester, assuming that you do the single major. So in terms of where our graduates go when they're done, that generally is quite a broad range of where they go. So we provide you with some scientific knowledge, provide you with some generic skills, which are things that employers like to look for when they employ people. So just because you've done an, a major in health and medical sciences doesn't lock you into staying in that field by any extent of the imagination. So some people do choose to stay in science and will carry on and do scientific or medical research. You have the option of staying on and doing honours in departments at La Trobe. So you do an extra year of research with the potential to go on and do masters or PhD after that. Some people go into a field of health. Some students will go and do something entirely different. So out of last year's students who graduated, we have people who went on to do further study in law, people who've gone on to teaching. So it's not tying you to a particular field, but primarily what we find is that at least 80% of our students go on into further study and they use the health and medical sciences major as a pathway to opening up doors to future study. So commonly we see students enrolling in graduate entry master's programs of physiotherapy, occupational therapy. A lot of the allied health disciplines is where we find people go. But also actually now we're finding that a lot of students, if you combine the major with some other subjects like biochemistry, they're using this major as a pathway into medicine. So really your options are very much open. You need to remember when you're thinking about doing combinations of majors that there are certain pathways that require you to complete certain electives. So we have information about those 
So if you have any questions, you can contact any of the course advisors or me specifically. Um, and we can help you identify some of the majors, so um, electives. So we know that if you want to apply for the graduate entry physio program, currently you can't take a double major because you don't have the correct electives that physiotherapy look for when you complete your application process. As part of some of the core first year subjects, you'll do some employability modules. So this is all about how the career service works, setting up a study plan, trying to identify what you may need to do to get to where you want to go when you graduate, assuming that you know what that is. And part of that will be trying to identify subjects that you can complete. So you will do that that's embedded in the first year. So we're not gonna throw you in at the end and go, right, off you go. You need to go and sort this out for yourself. All right, I will hold off any questions until the end. Is that all right, Ada? But I think I'm probably done talking. <laughs> Thanks, Caroline. Yes, please. Uh, so all the questions will have um, a, a last slide uh, for yep. questions and answer. Uh, if that's okay, okay, I'll hang guys. around. Thank you, Caroline. Um, the, then the next uh, two majors, you can see it links uh, together with each other. It's about public health and health promotion. And these two majors are run by wonderful team consisted of the following staff, um, as you can see here on this um, um, uh, slide. Uh, today we have Dr. Peter Higgs, who is the head of the uh, and the course advisor for health promotion to talk about uh, both uh, public health and health promotion. Steve, can you hear me? Yep, thank you. Hey, Dad. Sorry, Pete. Hi, yeah, everyone. Yes. That's all right. No problem. Um, yeah, so hi and welcome. We think it's a really fantastic and exciting time to be working in public health and in the health promotion sphere. The whole COVID-19 has enabled the term public health to be used a hell of a lot more than um, we've probably ever seen in the mainstream media and the kinds of people who are getting airtime and media time, uh, lots of people who work in our department, but who've also been trained as public health and health promotion workers. So it's not something that you automatically get access to. And I know for me in the four years that I've been teaching now at um, La Trobe, um, this is a really unique sort of space. These two majors themselves um, are really closely linked. And um, what it enables students to do is to um, to do a double major, if that's what your kind of inkling is. Um, certainly open to people coming and talking to any of the team there around the sorts of things um, that you're interested in. Um, doing a double major does limit your opportunities in terms of choosing electives and for overseas um, options or for um, workplace type play, uh, placements and integrated learning. So that's something to consider, but um, yeah, certainly think about that as an opportunity. The focus of these majors themselves is really on populations and communities rather than on the individuals that you've kind of heard about in those first two um, sort of discussions. And I guess our work really spans the spectrum of promoting good health right through to preventing disease and also managing um, people's illness and their um, disabilities that they may come across. It's a really interdisciplinary field and it applies all kinds of scientific approaches to the study of what we're interested in, which is improving um, the health of communities. In the majors themselves, we're really applied in our learning and we try and develop some really practical skills that are useful for you once you leave university. And that's about how you might develop or implement and evaluate policies and programs. Um, the sorts of things that you are required to do to prevent disease and injury and to undertake um, health or clinical research. Um, just next slide, hi, Hayda. Sorry. Um, the sorts of things that we're doing in public health are also thinking about, um, we're in, focused on the entire spectrum of people's health and where um, health promotion on one hand is about implementing the programs that improve all of populations. Um, we're also about enabling people to increase and control their own health um, and also looks at social and cultural factors 
that impact on people's um, experiences and the communities in which they live. The sorts of work that people end up in um, mean that there's a really broad kind of range of occupations. And as I mentioned, the sorts of people that you see in the media at the moment talking about COVID-19 and the responses to that, um, a lot of those people will have had training in public health and or health promotion. Um, so, you know, but we can also have a whole range of areas where people um, become educated in particular areas um, to focus on um, social marketing, public health advertising, youth work, looking at um, areas around um, homelessness, those sorts of things. And there's a range of the areas up on the screen there that give you a sense as to where some of our students have ended up in the last couple of years. The other important thing, uh, just to the next slide, Hayda, thanks. Yep. That's fine. Um, so the other important thing, as I said, we try and give people really applied and um, valuable practical skills. So um, in your third year, second semester, there is a whole field placement. One of the subjects is dedicated to actually being on placement. And the opportunities that people have inside of that um, have enabled people to go on and get work in those sorts of areas. Um, but it also gives you some real experience in terms of what are your particular areas of interest and where you might want to be kind of going on into um, being involved in the future. Um, one of the, the many of the jobs that you um, end up working in, A, do need experience. And it's really important, I guess, to emphasise that getting that first job in this field is quite difficult. And so the opportunities that you have where um, you're at university to get involved in organisations like the um, Public Health Students Association, um, to think about um, volunteer work, um, other opportunities will um, mean that you're able to put yourself in a much better position than that next person. Again, emphasising that the people who are involved that we had on that first slide, come and talk to us. We've got a lot of experience. As Caroline said, we're all active doing research now. So we know kind of what's going on on the field. We're not just spending our time at home as it is now instead of being on campus. And it is a very frustrating sort of time to be um, at university. And I think it's worth highlighting um, that, yeah, hopefully by this time next year, um, we'll be well and truly back on campus and immersed in face-to-face -face classes rather than having to look at ourselves on Zoom as we kind of seem to be spending most of our time doing. But um, welcome, as I said, to La Trobe and um, yeah, really encourage you to think about health promotion and public health and happy to take questions. Thanks very much, Pete. And yes, uh, although we are sitting here uh, in home, um, but you, you will see that uh, some of us have actually still um, active in, in doing research, whether animal or human-based uh, research or lab-based research. There are some uh, really good publications have been generated over the past uh, two to three months, even uh, if, if we are still working majority of home. But hopefully by next year, things will get back uh, to a normal uh, situation. Thanks again, Pete. Um, the next uh, two majors here is about rehabilitation counseling and sport counseling and athlete uh, welfare. Um, we've got also a dedicated team to um, act as course ad heads and course advisors for these two majors. Um, as you can see here from the slides, um, I was hoping that Paul uh, uh, and or Scott to be joining us today to talk about um, their fields, but I think both of them are in apology uh, at the moment. So I'm happy to go over quickly through some of their contents here. So rehabilitation counseling is mostly focusing on um, the person, um, not on the community as in public health and health promotions, mostly on the person um, and provide uh, life changing um, supports. While for the second major, it's mostly about um, 
providing um, well-being health, uh, well-being um, um, and performance for um, uh, overall general well-being or and part of it is about the uh, sport itself. Um, we are expecting some uh, uh, updates here about the name of the sport where um, uh, counseling and athlete welfare is to be uh, uh, renamed into health, uh, performance, and well-being. Pete, uh, correct me if I'm wrong about this. Um, so the new name will be, uh, if, if it all has been approved, the new name will be uh, um, updated by the beginning of 2021. But there is no change into the contents, it's just uh, to be much more um, uh, focused on the providing the um, well-being. Um, here, um, what this is a slide from Paul's uh, in a couple of months ago, he provided uh, us with uh, quick statistics about the demands for the rehabilitation counseling positions as well as well-being positions. As you can see here from the statistics, there is a drastic uh, increase in the uh, number of jobs in these relevant fields. So still these two uh, majors are really under uh, high demands. And again, there are a lot of uh, professionals professional organizations um, to offer uh, future career opportunities for graduates from these two majors. Um, you can do these majors either in combined or you choose to do a single major or combine one of these majors with public health, health promotion uh, or um, health and medical sciences, depending on which uh, configured um, uh, options are available on the student's handbook. And um, this is like showing some of the job titles for graduates from rehabilitation counseling, like mental health, mental injury specialist, um, um, rehabilitation injury management. So there are some of uh, really, um, or vocational advisors, these are some of really um, 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 good uh, career options for um, the um, graduates from this um, major. Um, the same thing applies for the second majors. Um, I can see here a set of really uh, good like well-being and inclusion advisors, health and well-being advisors or specialists, and some of the organizations that may offer uh, job opportunities for this. For further details, please feel free to talk to Paul and or Scott from the contact details in the previous two slides for if you need for further information about these two uh, majors. Um, yeah, so here's about the skill-based jobs and real world experience, yeah, for different fields, relevant fields for their majors and the, um, yeah, if, if the students wishing or willing to do the double majors in, in both of these two. Um, again, um, a really good, nice set of organizations that may offer um, job opportunities for our graduates. Um, yeah, so um, the, 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 the following few slides will be covering uh, general information about uh, work or studying at LATO. So um, you can see here the some of the essential resources that uh, our students will need to be aware of, or it would be good for them to be aware of to help um, um, them uh, study. Um, so the first one here is about Ask Latro, which is, this is considered to be as one stop station for all administrative related uh, questions. Like if you've got a question about course enrollment, intermission, transfer, academic progression, which you will need it, uh, you may need to apply for. Um, the Ask Latrop is the first point of contact for you guys. The LMS or Learning Management System is the website which you can access to get information about your, your subjects. So you can access the subjects learning guide, access the lecture notes, recording, 
study materials, uh, discussion po board, you can post your questions and get some answers either from your um, lecturers or from your colleagues, as well as you can access the uh, assessment uh, um, uh, um, items. Uh, currently with moving into our into the um, online um, mode, um, majority, if, if not all of our subjects are currently delivered complete, purely online. So even the recording, the Zoom uh, chat, um, and uh, the assessment all will have been transferred into online. Um, uh, accordingly, you need to familiarize yourself really well with the LMS um, to help uh, your um, study. Uh, there will be um, some um, workshops offered for you to, whether from the peer mentor programs via or via the library, uh, to help you um, understand better how LMS uh, works. Um, you have you will be also um, issued with your Latrobe email. This is the official email account. Um, you will need to use this account when you communicate with us and we will only respond to your um, Latrobe account. And this is um, very important to protect your confidentiality. Um, so um, even if you contact us from your personal email, you will see that when we reply, um, we will certainly include your official Latrop account. Although we will strongly recommend that you use uh, your Latrop email when you contact us. Um, what else? Then, so, ah, about the library. Okay, so the library here, um, whether um, the face-to-face -face or the physical library or the online library will offer you really good resources of the contents. You can access textbooks, you can access um, studies or um, uh, journals. Um, and also for our first year students, they um, have um, um, one hour library starter class that is offered for them during the beginning of semester one and semester two each year. So um, you are more than welcome to contact the library and request or book your own uh, startup uh, um, uh, package um, to be introduced into uh, the library and how you can efficiently use um, its website. Okay, so um, here you've got three main contact points. Ask Latrop, this is the admin part of the university, which you can uh, contact them for all the admin uh, related duties, um, enrollment, as we said, um, fee, subject fee, students ID cards and so on. Um, if you've got a question relevant to specific subjects like contents, assessment, and table for that particular subjects, please feel free to contact the relevant subjects coordinator. Uh, while if you've got um, question related to the course, to the degree, uh, to your study plan in general, develop an alternative study plan, uh, the pathways, which majors, hence we um, um, uh, will be available here to help. So you can contact the, either myself or the uh, course advisors for help. If you don't know whom to contact here, uh, you can contact myself and I'm more than happy to direct you to the appropriate course advisors for specific information. Um, career Ready, also there is um, specific um, service available for you at Latrop to help you develop your career. Um, look for a casual uh, or part-time work during your study. Uh, there is available internship, volunteering, grad programs. Uh, you will also be able to access the Bachelor of Health Science Students Hub, where we'll be able to post some of the relevant information about this on this uh, LMS. Uh, Latrop also provide um, um, like the following students well-being services, uh, like a counseling service, uh, equity and diversity, um, speak up. All of these services should be provided to you during the welcome package, and uh, each one of them have been uh, have their dedicated online resources. So you can search for that and uh, for that 
particular department or um, office and uh, ask for further uh, support as required. Um, today, um, yeah, and in addition to all the previous uh, supports, um, in, in, in over the recent years, uh, we managed to develop um, a mentoring program. So this is uh, what's relevant to Bachelor of Health Science is called the Health Peer Mentors uh, Meetups. And this, this program um, is uh, conducted by the senior students who are um, in, in, in year three, for example, or year two or year three, who successfully managed to finish year one and went up, or even in the on, doing honors degree, postgraduates, and are happy to volunteer their time uh, to help the first year students to stand up uh, and understand, better understand the university environment and answer some questions. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce to you guys uh, Ricky Wood. Uh, Ricky is one of our health sciences peer mentors. Uh, he is in year three of uh, his Bachelor of Health Sciences doing human physiology and anatomy. And Ricky has kindly accepted to um, talk about his experience in this course. And I think if we've okay. got some time to do um, a quick survey, I think we've got some time, Ricky. Uh, I'll leave the mic for you, mate. Uh, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, am I also able to share my screen? Yes, you can. I'll stop sharing my screen. Cool. Um, yeah, so first of all, um, congratulations, like I said in my email, on being accepted into La Trobe um, and welcome. This is all very different at the moment. It's all online. Um, but what I have today is a few tips um, regarding what I believe helped me throughout my studies. And I'll just share my screen now. So, oops, wrong screen. <laughs> so, one of my tips were is to use my Microsoft OneNote. So, I don't know if many of you have actually heard of. Ricky, uh, your uh, sound is dropping, mate. If you want, you One, can uh, stop your video. But just to improve the internet. I found it out. Okay. How's that? Yep. Yep. Is that be is that better? Yes, mate. Okay. Cool. Uh, um. Yeah. So. Micro too well uh, helps you write down notes. Um, take screenshots of pictures, and yes, I highly recommend Microsoft OneNote. Um, another tip of mine is to use um, EndNote. I don't know if many of you have heard about EndNote as well, but in IDH or SDH, I remember when I was doing first year you have to write an essay and this is a great tool to use for when you are referencing your answers um, if you go if you join LinkedIn there is a tutorial on how to use and and it's about 40 minutes to an hour and it really goes, I really recommend that. Um, also to another tip for me is to use, or to really be strict with following the learning objectives. So, um, you know, use the learning objectives as a bit of a skeleton to how you learn the core content. Um, and, then of it, and then after you've learned the learning objectives, then you can start to branch out and learn more about that particular topic, but really follow and adhere to the learning objectives. Um, my last tip would to be, would be to use, um, would be, so I've got it here. Can everyone see that? 
Yes, Ricky. Yep. So this um, diagram here is one you'll use a lot throughout anatomy in particular. Um, if you go on to um, major in the health and medical sciences. So this diagram here, I printed out and I even laminated it. So if you get a couple of whiteboard markers, you can trace out um, the pathways for the nervous system. So I found that really useful during my anatomy studies. Um, and I also, what, what I found works for me um, during my studies is it will be difficult because everything is online at the moment, but you don't always have to work in groups. But I found, especially towards exam time, is to really find a group who really want to do well in the exam and um, really go over what you can expect on the exam um, and quiz each other, start drawing out diagrams so you all understand what you're learning about you know some people learn differently to you so it's good to cross check and see if they've picked up on something that you've missed um yeah they're the tips that i would have for me um also if you do have any problems with essay writing and referencing i would definitely speak to peer learning advisors um they're they're excellent at helping you they read your essay they can I have for you guys um you know good luck with your studies um enjoy it it's try and when you attend these science hubs and learning hubs usually the people who are attending those are the people who are like-minded they they want to develop their skills they want to communicate with the teachers other students and they're a really great way during online learning that i found to really engage into the in the course content so i would highly recommend that as well so yeah i think i'll leave it at that hater if that's all right thank you ricky uh, thanks very much if you can um, stop sharing your screen that would be great so we can see the rest of the um, yep. students excellent thanks very much um so i think um, um this is um, all what we can um, say for this sh very short period of time. Um, just in summary, uh, just to remind you all um, uh, to um, be connected with your academics. If you've got any issue, please feel free to contact the relevant uh, staff. Um, if your question is re purely admin related, uh, make sure to submit your request through um, Ask Latrobe. And I can see here that uh, Pete has kindly uh, posted uh, um, a link for the EndNotes guide for Latrobe library. So you can access the guide on in the chat um, uh, section. Uh, and also he posted the public health students uh, association information as well uh, if you wanted to click on that um, 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 if uh, Pete are you happy to post some of this information on the Bachelor of Health Science students hub the the main hub so it's oh. it is available for all the students in this course is that if that's probably. okay mate that oh. would be fantastic um, yeah and uh, um, Ricky if you've got further information um, our resources, send it to me, mate, and I'll post it also on that uh, common uh, hub to be accessed for, not for to um, the current students, also for all students um, enrolled in the course. Yeah, no worries. Excellent, thanks very much. Um, I think um, we've got about a couple of minutes left for questions. Yeah, we've got about six minutes left for questions. So if you have any question, feel free to ask it now um, or email us later on. I will be more than happy to help. So um, the time is open for you guys um, for questions. All too shy. Yeah, we're just starting. 
that's fine. Are you all happy about or ready to start the, um, the semester? Um, do you have all the resources available? Are you able to access the Zoom classes? Um, if you don't want it to talk, you can write, you can post your um, questions on the tutorial section and we can answer it for you. All right, fair enough. Um, you've got uh, um, our contact details. Um, we are more than happy to answer your question at any time. Um, um, if you email us just uh, during this period, just be mindful that we are in the process of marking exams. So it may take a couple of uh, days to respond to you. Uh, however, we'll try our best to respond as soon as possible. Um, this is um, the end of our um, uh, session for today. Um, please help me or join me thanking Carolyn, Pete, and Ricky for their um, uh, time and help today. Thank you guys. And I wish you all the best for your um, study of Bachelor of Health Science. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Good luck, everyone. Bye.